Gallia, the ancient land we now know as France, was a land constantly in flux. Divided into three distinct regions, it was home to fierce tribes and clans, who fiercely guarded their independence from neighboring kingdoms. The southern tip of Aquitania, bordered by the formidable Garonne River and looming Pyrenees Mountains. The northwestern region of Belgia, with the mighty Seine River marking its southern boundary. And Celtic Gaul, spanning from the untamed Atlantic Ocean to the rugged Rhine River and Alps. But these were not the only territories vying for control in Gallia. Across the Alps and Cévennes Mountains lay Gallia Transalpina, a strip of land coveted by powerful empires, serving as a crucial link between Italy and Iberia. Throughout history, waves of migrants swept over the land, leaving their mark on its culture and people. From Western hunter-gatherers over 15,000 years ago to Neolithic farmers 7,000 years later and stepper Enneolithic age populations after them. But even as they settled in this rich land, others sought to conquer it. The Celts expanded their territory, followed by the imposing Roman Empire. Later came barbarian migrations, their impact still unknown, bringing turmoil and change. France's strategic location made it a prime target for mass migrations from all directions, north to the British Isles, south to the Iberian Peninsula and North Africa. Its position as a major crossroads also made it a hub for trade and cultural exchange. But before France became a unified nation, it was a fragmented landscape of warring factions. Pre-Roman Gaul was divided into fiercely independent territories, each vying for control. And even after the fall of the mighty Roman Empire, this pattern continued. The Germanic tribes of Franks, Visigoths, and Burgundians carved out their own kingdoms within French borders. And even the brief unification under the Carolingian Empire could not quell the ambition of local warlords, desperate for power and autonomy. The feudal period saw the rise of provinces that pledged their allegiance to the King of France, yet remained fiercely independent in their own right. France may have been divided, but its people were united by a relentless spirit of independence and determination. For centuries, the French kings forged ahead with unwavering determination, conquering and assimilating any territories that stood in their way. Even amidst conflicts like the brutal Hundred Years' War, they maintained their grip on the lands to the east and Brittany, solidifying their central power until the tumultuous French Revolution. And yet, despite their efforts to unify the country, each individual province held tight to its own distinct political, cultural, and linguistic differences, a divide that may still linger in the genetic makeup of modern France. While a portion of France's eastern border is formed by the mighty Rhine River for 166 kilometers, there are no significant barriers to separate it from neighboring countries like Belgium and Germany. Such a complex history and diverse geography undoubtedly left indelible marks upon the genetic structure of today's French population. The study of human population genetics is a pivotal subject with immense importance in various fields. It unravels the complex history of populations and their migrations, shedding light on the distribution of traits and their impact on our world. Genetic disparities among populations can pinpoint key genetic variations that influence diverse phenotypes. Consequently, there has been a surge of interest in studying human populations, aided by the vast wealth of genetic information available spanning the entire genome. Despite previous efforts in examining population stratification in France, which revealed strong correlations between genetics and geography in Western regions like Pays de la Loire and Brittany, a comprehensive investigation covering the entirety of the country using unbiased samples from individuals encompassing various ancestries had yet to be conducted. 
To address this gap, scientists utilized haplotype-based methods known to offer greater resolution than allele-based approaches to scrutinize the intricate pattern of fine-scale population stratification in France. By employing two independent cohorts with genome-wide genotype data comprising over 2,000 individuals hailing from all corners of continental France, scientists aimed to assess the genetic structure of the French population and draw insights into its demographic history. Upon analysis, the French genomes were found to align as expected with those of other European nations, such as Great Britain, Central Europe, Italy, and Spain, from the 1000 Genomes Project. However, within France itself, patterns emerged linking individuals' genetic data to their specific birth locations. These correlations gradually shifted over space, indicative of isolation by distance. But while there is clear alignment between allele frequency distributions and population geographic distributions, clusters also emerged that suggest localized barriers to gene flow. Of particular note is the stark division between northern and southern France, possibly mirroring the historic von Wartburg line that separated the Roman-influenced Languedoc region from the Germanic-speaking Languedoc area. This boundary has evolved over centuries, but remains evident in the findings which closely align with estimates from the 9th century. And intriguingly enough, this north-south divide follows the Loire River, a long-standing political and cultural border between northern and southern kingdoms. Regions with fiercely guarded cultural identities refuse to mix, creating deep divides and separate identities. A prime example is Aquitaine in the southwest, a land that has long stood apart as its own civilization. The Brittany region is also fiercely independent, holding itself apart from the rest of France in both data sets. This could be attributed to its strategic position at the edge of the continent, jutting out like a proud peninsula, and its rich history as an independent political entity first a kingdom and later a duchy of Britannia, with stable borders for centuries. The extreme southwestern regions show alarming levels of differentiation from their neighboring clusters. In the data set, there is even an additional cluster that stands out starkly. This can likely be explained by a higher proportion of possibly Basque individuals, overlapping with HGDP Basque-defined individuals. The FST values between the Southwest and the other French clusters are markedly higher than those between remaining French clusters. In fact, in the dataset, these values rival those between Italy and Northwestern Europe. Similar trends were observed in other dataset, although the level of differentiation was weaker. Scientists have also discovered that the genetic structure of France aligns strikingly with two major rivers, La Garonne and La Loire. At a more detailed level, the Adour River serves as a dividing line between the southwest and south clusters in the dataset. This alignment suggests moderate genetic isolation between riversides and may reflect isolation by resistance where natural features such as river barriers or altitude hinder connectivity. The Loire is a mighty and unpredictable river known for regularly exceeding its banks during floods, leaving behind vast swaths of mud and swamps several kilometers wide when it recedes. Even at its flattest point, the slope of the Loire is three times steeper than that of the Seine River. Similarly, the Garonne River boasts one of the fastest flow rates and has historically served as a border between the Aquitans and Celtic Gauls since ancient times, with few fords or bridges to allow for easy passage across its formidable waters. History, culture and politics have carved deep borders into the genetic structure of modern-day France, creating visible clusters that belie a surprisingly homogeneous population. 
FST values are low between these clusters, indicating a strong genetic closeness among neighboring European countries. But beneath the surface lies a complex web of migration and mixture revealed by the analysis. Intriguingly, scientists found that Brittany is genetically closer to Northwest Europe than to its geographic neighbor in northern France. Could this be attributed to the waves of Britons who migrated to Armorica, now Brittany, centuries ago? Perhaps Britain's soldiers in the 4th century sought refuge on these shores, only to be joined by their countrymen fleeing Anglo-Saxon invasions in a second wave. More data may be needed to unravel this mystery, but one thing is clear. The three main ancestral populations that shaped modern European genetic diversity, early Neolithic farmers from Anatolia, steppe pastoralists from Eurasia's northern plains, and hunter-gatherers, have all left their mark on France. Neolithic farmers dominate the population, but the steppe pastoralists' contribution is higher in the north. Is this due to the geographical limits of Neolithic expansion or more recent migrations from northern Europe? The answer may lie in rare genetic variations yet to be explored. This trend echoes similar patterns seen across Europe during the demographic transition a monumental shift sparked by advancements in agriculture and infrastructure which led to a decline in death rates. The once common occurrences of famine and disease were now held at bay, allowing for greater stability and growth. Yet, lurking beneath this positive trend lies a dark period of depression spanning over two centuries, twelve to twenty-two generations ago. This era, marred by repeated outbreaks of plague, saw the population plummet from an estimated 20 million to a mere 12 million before struggling to regain its former strength under the rule of Louis XIV. But while the majority of France seems to have been impacted by these events, it is the northern region that bears the most scars, as evidenced by the North Cluster being hit hardest. Historical records offer little explanation for this anomaly, with only one instance of plague recorded in this area during 1666 to 1670. Some speculate that the hilly and mountainous terrain of the South Cluster may have provided some protection against these epidemics, offering a possible alternative explanation. Undoubtedly, plague has played a significant role in shaping the demographic history of France, with past outbreaks decimating entire populations. However, genetic data showed no signs pointing to the infamous Justinian Plague, 541 to 767 AD, despite historical records stating otherwise. This could be due to limitations in accurately estimating population changes beyond 50 to 100 generations, compounded by smaller sample sizes and reduced IBD resolution. The power of this study lies in its comprehensive approach, combining two datasets with different sampling methods and genotyping strategies. As scientists strive towards a more geographically uniform distribution of samples, one individual per birth town, the concordance between our chromo-painter clusters and migration barriers identified only strengthens. Understanding the genetic structure of a population is crucial in guiding future studies, particularly for rare variants. With advances in whole genome sequencing and new methodologies, we can expect even more detailed insights into the demographic history of France in the near future. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.